Welcome back to our Slam Dance 2024 coverage here at First Reviews. I'm sitting today with director Rafael Toledo of the short film Blockbuster. The plot reads, obsessed with the practical effects of classical cinema, an amateur director decides to orchestrate a real building explosion for his next film. If I'm not mistaken, is this your first short film? Could you talk a little more about your overall filmmaking journey? Yeah, uh, actually, it's my second short film. Mm-hmm. I made a fantasy horror called Graveyard of Flowers. That would be my first. But yeah, Blockbuster is my second short film. But I think like since then, uh, I think I got a better grip of my style. So I think Blockbuster is a really good like representative of what I'm trying to do, like mm-hmm. in that one and also the next ones as well. How long have you had this idea laying around um, of this obsessed filmmaker? And like, when did that idea come into you as during your journey? When did you start writing the story? Yeah, uh, I think I had the idea for a long time because every time like I was thinking about doing movies or writing, uh, one thing that you always do is like trying to look for uh, influences, inspirations and like researching and like and well, sometimes when you're doing like practical effects, you want the thing to be like as close as possible to the real thing. So mm-hmm. I always like the idea of what about a director who like doesn't care about anything else other than like the effect. Mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't care about like uh, sparing lives or doing it in a safe way. He would he would only want the like the the effect. So I think that's what the idea is born, like a psychopath director. Yeah. And when I started writing, I, I thought like, oh, we are also talking about like the mentality of all directors. Like yeah. they're trying to get the best shot possible. So in the end, it was like not only a criticism of a psychopath director, but also talking a bit, little bit about directors in general. Yeah. So with those parallels to you know, the satire of the industry. While you were shooting, were there any films or directors you felt you were paying homage to that you were discussing with the rest of the crew? Uh, Yeah, I think in terms of tone, like the Coen brothers were a big inspiration. Like the idea of putting like disturbing people mixing with like very vulnerability and like those meet those mix of dark and comedy, I think they were a big inspiration, not only on the tone, but in terms of blocking as well, like the way they shoot. So I would say they were like one of the biggest inspirations. And I feel like the Coens are like really good at depicting that sort of spontaneous chaos that um, yeah. that your main character is, um, is like obsessed with trying to get together. What were some other key aspects that you wanted to, carry through with the visual tone and the rhythm of the editing here? Uh, well, we were really trying to achieve like uh, like paying homage to this old movies, the classics that Abel like, but at the same time, pairing it with the like blockbusters, like the action flicks that he talks about. So yeah, we tried to like make, make a mix of like really cheesy and popcorn flicks. Yeah. Like with the chicken time bomb and the like dog being rescued, like the old woman in danger. Like but pairing like with the t- type of protagonist that you don't really see on this on those on this type of films. Absolutely. I think that was that we try like it was always on the whole thing thing in mind. So your main actor Louise plays the character Abel, who is of course uh, this obsessed veteran filmmaker who just wants that perfect practical shot no matter what. Uh, what were the first conversations you had with Louise about bringing the character to life? Uh, yeah, I think we, like Louise is, in, is an incredible actor. So most of our talks were trying to like get inside the subtext and the like what those this guy really has in mind and what like his uh what like what his main drive and what as an actor we had to achieve 
to make the short thing thing works because like he's an incredible actor so like when we started discussing the character it was really natural for him to like get into that mindset so i think the most important thing like was trying to see how she, he should drive the story forward because uh it's not about only about like being the character but he like he had to be dissociated from the real world you know what i mean like he can't interact with anyone and that's kind of the opposite of what you want uh normally in a story because like he couldn't like really connect to the other people around him because he was in his own little world so that was really living of, in his own world yeah 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 so nothing else matters of, yeah um so like what were some of the things that or some of the main ideas that he brought to it was there anything that you could see in the film that maybe he improvised yeah like Luis is a he started his career as a ballet dancer ballet oh wow so his physicality is incredible like the way he approaches movement as an actor and all the like the way his body is so active and like the same time there's a creepiness and at the same time it's always looks really well on screen like the block in his position so that like he was a uh, a great uh like that's a, a lot there's a lot of him in this way like his background as a theater and mm -hmm. ballet dance actor so were you like trying to play around differently with a blocking each take or was the blocking very specific in that way uh especially uh, in the later parts yeah i think like each scene he kind of has his own choreography like the first one is a little bit more uh music influenced influenced and a little more like theater in a way but when he's interacting with the other like real people it gets a little bit more uh, nuance and like more like the real world like more simple so yeah i think that's where there were the main difference like when he was alone and he was talk, talk more to the camera versus mm -hmm. when he was acting with the other actors how long was your shoot by the way uh two days like two like two days nights. total two nights yeah, two nights. yeah. We shot it in a abandoned building in my city. I uh, know not abandoned. Like the building is like the floor is abandoned. But yeah, so we had a good space to transform into his apartment. Mm -hmm. Are you someone who likes to get a lot of good takes, or is it like a couple of of like really good takes, and then once you've got it, you move on? Uh, no, yeah, I'm actually, I I really want to get it like as I pictured. Sometimes, so there was always like uh, a lot of discussions with my AD, yeah. like which, uh, but we have a really good relationship. So he's always trying to say, we definitely need more shots because we haven't. <clears throat> Sorry, we haven't got there yet. So, like, we get more of these and like compromise, saying, okay, now this one we can go faster. But I think that's a good way to approach it, like to know. Uh, especially on this second short, like know what we really need to get right and what we can like improvise a little bit. Were there any lines that maybe you wrote or even shot or any other plot points that you thought of throwing in but had to end up leaving out of the final film? Uh, actually, no. Like on the beginning, there were like the story was when I was writing, the story was like it i try to go in different ways <laughs> but really on the like on the film i think it's really close to what we pictured like everything that we shot end up, ended up there yeah and yeah i think that's great absolutely uh so of course the pinnacle of the short is the explosion where everything comes together um, how did you bring that explosion to life? Was there some controversy around blowing up the parking lot? No, I'm just kidding. But um, like, how visually did you uh, bring that explosion to life with special effects? Yeah, uh, I think that was the 
definitely the hardest part because it was like two nights of shooting and one year of production. So, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I think like we started thinking we will, we will, would only need like the camera, like the lenses reflex of the explosion. Mm -hmm. So, but when we started like later in the project, we really thought, oh no, we really need to show the bomb. We really need to show the aftermath, like the, like the old lady blowing up and the, like the aftermath of the building. So the whole process of doing all these shots and the tomato shots took close to a year of post-production because we had to like, find the right people we didn't have a lot of budget so some of those i made some were the like the tomato shot were done practically practically because we found like uh uh a guy in belo horizonte who shoots like car car crash tests so he had like a uh camera for a science use that shoot like twenty five thousand frames a second so we were able to really explode the can and finding like the real VFX artist. So yeah, that was definitely part, but I'm happy with the end result because like the whole movie is the combination of the bomb. Of course. Absolutely. And like, it looks like it definitely paid off a year's work. Um, but I'm also really itching to know about the dog actor. Was this dog um, easy to direct? Was he a stubborn dog or she? Um, I'd love to hear about this. Yeah, he's a... Uh... He was easy to direct. Like we got more, like because we were looking for a dog that had like uh, he was that was really cool, cute, but at the same time could pass as an old lady dog. Like that went through a lot of things with her. But like we, he is it. It was an older dog, like fourteen years. It's it's called uh, what's called Alvinho. Uh, he passed away unfortunately, like before the movie premiered, but. Like it was really easy working because it was like the dog of my brother's girlfriend. Yeah. So like she was there the whole time, like helping us, like guiding him because most of the scene is just like uh, going for a walk. And right. then like he walked walk to point A to point B. So we like, we didn't need a lot of him. So it was like just him being a dog and we filmed it. Filming it. I'm sure he would have been proud of his performance in the final project. Yeah. Um, He's a uh, it was good to like I think has to have this also as a memoir of him as well like because he's really cute and people really like him in the film of course um, so you premiered the film at Slamdance now could you talk about the festival experience there uh, what it was like screening it to an audience finally yeah uh, like I couldn't be happier like being at like being chosen to Slanders and for the whole last week, like I, I've seen so many incredible films. Yeah, I, yeah, it's like it's really good when you like because when you get there, you're like, oh, I, I really like want my film to like win awards, things like that. But when I saw like the whole selection, I was like, damn, like these are really incredible filmmakers. So I re I, I was really happy to be like a part of it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, mm, yeah. like here because the quality of the movies are so good was incredible and i got to talk and make friendships that i would hope uh are going to last long last a long time that's wonderful uh that's what i've heard from talking to others is that um there's a very like familial environment to meeting filmmakers at slam dance would you say that yeah like we i think we are the whole week watching movies together at the same place and like exploring park city so i think i like it's a really different atmosphere from the other festivals that I went. Like people are really like open to meeting other filmmakers, discussing movies. So yeah, what was incredible. Uh even in LA now, like I'm meeting up with the people that I meet that I met there. So that's, uh, yeah, that's like, like, terrific. Yeah, for hope hope for a better outcome. Is there anything else you can tell the people watching about um, where they could maybe find Blockbuster in the future? Or is that still in the works? Oh, yeah. I, we are just at the beginning of the festival run. So hopefully, like, in other festivals. But, yeah, uh, I'm really taking the time to, after Slanders, to really program the next steps 
and also think about f future projects as well. Perfect. Well, um, thank you so much, Raphael, for sitting with me and uh, discussing your short blockbuster. This is really it's a short, but very exciting and has a great sort of exclamation at the end that I really loved. Uh, great work. And again, congrats on your premiere at Slam Dance. And thank you guys for watching. Yeah, it's, it's honestly been incredible. And thanks for the interview. Of course.